Okay, so we're going to be moving on to the Solids of Revolution chapter, where we'll be looking at working out volumes of lines that are rotated around an axis. So it's quite an interesting topic, and um, I always remember the first lesson I was ever taught of this. Um, back, you know, about 10 or 11 years ago. Um, so let's take a nice simple line, like y is equal to 2x plus 2. I've sketched it on the board here, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at this area here. The area between 0 and 1 on the x-axis. So at this point on the y-axis we are at 4. Okay. And what we're going to do is we are going to take this area and we are going to bring it out of the board and round so that it creates kind of a, um, a cone shape with its top chopped off. So it's going to look something, if I draw this more accurately, it's going to look like it's been rotated round Okay, so it's kind of, if you looked at it side on, it would look something like that. Okay, so like a cone that's had its top chopped off, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to try and work out the volume of this uh, shape. Now, in order to do that, what we first got to determine is a way of actually working out, well, working out that volume, but working out exactly how the uh, volume is changing. Because obviously, if this was just a straight horizontal line, then uh, this would be a cylinder that is rotated around. Okay, I get a cylinder. What I'd like to, to imagine is that if you were to take slices of this shape, then each slice would be a circle. Every single slice would be a circle. So think of it like um, um, you put, you know, like a butcher would put uh, to generate ham. It has that big slicing machine. Okay, so imagine putting it through this big slicing machine, and each time it takes a slice, you get a circle. But every time we're moving along the x-axis, the circles are getting larger and larger and larger. Okay, so the size of the circle, the size of the area that we're getting, depends on how far along the x-axis we are in this case. So, in other words, the radius of each of those circles depends on where we are. And the radius at each value of x is given by y. Okay, so if you think about the area of the circle being pi r squared, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up all of these circles as we go along. And all those areas compacted, infinitesimally thin, will compact into a volume. And so I'm going to sum all of those areas together, all of those pi r squareds together. But because r, the radius is changing, what we said is that for each value of x, the radius is given by y equals. So the radius is actually y equals at each point between, in this case, 0 and 1. And we're integrating over dx. So what we found here is that the volume will be given by this formula, by this integral, rather. Okay. 
So it's all got to do with this idea of the pi r squared and me adding up an infinite number of pi r squareds. And that's why the integral sign can sometimes be thought of as a summation. So what we're doing here is that if you're integrating um, a, well, if you had this, this is y is equal to f of x, but, and you want to work out the area, well, the volume, uh, that is formed when I rotate this area about the x-axis, then this is given by pi y squared between a and b dx. Okay, so what we have here. Now in practice, what that means is that if I then substitute in my y equals here, I get the integral between 0 and 1. I'll bring the pi outside, actually. And I've got 2x plus 2, all squared, dx. So I multiply out the brackets. It's quite easy to forget the pi each time, so make sure you do. I almost forgot it there. Um, so multiplying out the brackets, we get 4x squared uh, plus 8x plus 4 dx. I must then integrate. So keep that pi on the outside. Pi is going to be there all the way through. So we're going to get 4x cubed over 3 plus uh, 4x squared plus 4x between 0 and 1. So we're going to get 4 thirds plus 4, plus 4, take away uh, 0, plus 0, plus 0. So 4 thirds plus 4 plus 4, so that's 8. That's 24 thirds, so that's 28 thirds pi. And that is the exact volume that is generated that is in this cone with its end chopped off, okay, with its top chopped off. Okay, so it, it may feel that my explanation here has been a little bit wishy-washy, okay, but I've tried to make you understand that it's all coming from that idea of the area of the circle, pi r squared, and each time you take a slice of your shape, okay, each time you will get a circle, but the radius is changing depending on where you make the cut. So the radius is actually given by the height between the x-axis and the line, or the curve. And in this case, well, in that it will be y, okay? In this case, it's 2x plus 2, okay? Um, in the next video, I'm going to go through a couple more examples um, of rotating around the x-axis.